uh, and the invocation will be given by the pastor, Jeremy Ushery, uh, the Church of the King Gulf Coast Campus, if everybody Thank you for, uh, God, this meeting tonight. God, thank you for each leader here and each councilman and the mayor. Lord, I pray you just give them the wisdom of Solomon. Lord, I pray your presence will be here. Lord, I pray that we would make decisions tonight, God, that would ultimately honor you and glorify you. And God, help make this coast a success. We thank you for that. We invite your presence here tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for that. Uh, also, I would like to ask our birthday councilwoman, Dixie Newman, if, uh, by the way, happy cake, candles, and coffee to you, uh, if you would lead us in the pledge. All right, I need a motion uh, to approve the agenda. So moved. Moved by Mr. Tisdale. Second by Mr. Deming. Any discussion? All in favor of the agenda? Those opposed? Who seconded? Uh, motion passes. The agenda is approved. We'll go right into the mayor's report. Thank you, Mr. President. This is not your last meeting as president. Is, is, is that right? This no. is the last few oh, minutes. Oh, a few minutes. Oh, yeah. wow. I just, Ron and his wife, Karen, to please come up. But we, we've got a proclamation for you. You know, I've known Ron a long time. He's been around here a long time and done so many great things. But, you know, he's coming up on the season. So let me read this on behalf of the city, city council, and myself. Whereas the Christmas City Gift Show began in 1983 as an outdoor show at Rice Pavilion in Gulfport. With little more than 35 booths, it quickly outgrew its home. And now, 35 years later, it's the longest-running annual event at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum and Convention Center. And whereas, over the years, promoter Ron Myers has produced Christmas shows in the Superdome, Hattiesburg, Mobile, Pensacola, but it is Biloxi that drew the large crowds. So in 1997, all Ron's energy goes into this once-a-year spectacular event. Now, whereas with more than 35 years of experience, Ryan Myers has more than 200 successful events and shows to his credit, but the Christmas show remains the largest event, attracting more than 12,000 shoppers a year, and has not only been repeatedly recognized as the top 20 tourist events in the Southeast, but Ryan estimates its impact to the Gulf Coast economy by half a million dollars each year. Now, therefore, I, Andrew Fofo Gillich, Mayor of the City of Biloxi, on the occasion of the 2018, uh, 2018 Christmas City event, and in recognition of the continuing success of Ron Myers, do hereby proclaim November 9th through the 11th, 2018, as Christmas City Weekend. So, congratulations. There you go. For the World Wide Web. Right. So, I'll give you an opportunity if you'd like to say something. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate um, this honor. Uh, 35 years, it's been a long time, but uh, the city of Biloxi has been tremendous, all the way from Bill Holmes and now Matt McDonald, the hotels, and uh, I'll continue to keep a first-class event for the residents of the Gulf Coast, and thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. We have some members from Beth Israel here, right? Please come up here. It gives me great pleasure to do this also from the city proclamation. Whereas on September 4, 1958, a formal dedication ceremony was held for Congre Congregation Beth Israel. The first building was in Biloxi on the corner of Camilla and Southern. It began as a house, but it was remodeled into a synagogue. The congregation remained there until August 29, 2005, when the synagogue was destroyed by Hurricane Katrina. Whereas after Katrina, the congregation had a wonderful interface, had wonderful interface stories. Beauvoir United Methodist offered a use of a building. 
Keesel Air Force Base provided a chapel for high holiday services in a number of years after Katrina. Whereas in 2008, Congregation Beth Israel broke ground on a new building in Guffboard, north of Interstate 10, and the congregation moved into the building in 2009. Now, whereas Congregation Beth Israel is, an active, is active in the community in charitable work, including food drives to local food banks, gift card drives and for the communities after storms, and members of the congregation have been invited to lead prayers at, at Katrina ceremonies, board meetings, and other events, and to participate in the prayer services and other gatherings. Now, therefore, I, Andrew Fofo Gillich, Mayor of the City of Biloxi, do hereby congratulate and commend the members of the Congregation Beth Israel on the sixth, 60th anniversary of serving Biloxi and the Mississippi Gulf Coast. So we thank you. Well, we thank you, Mayor, and the City of Biloxi Council members for this proclamation. Um, it's especially meaningful to receive this at this time when there's been a lot of ugliness in the world and we get this, which shows that there's a lot of love for all of our communities and all of our um, faiths have a place here along the Gulf Coast. I wasn't around when the founders came up with Congregation Beth Israel 60 years ago, but I'm certainly glad that they did. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. I always forget this, so let me say this first like to ask you to spread upon the minutes the Biloxi travel card expense. Okay, that's okay. easy. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, yeah, I, I do want, want to talk about, and you, many of you heard, in, in the, the opportunity I think we have to uh, partner with BBR and some of the things that have been kicked around from the waterfront uh, 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 workshop, but it had been talked about for a while. This is an opportunity, uh, again, to have input on what we feel, it, it, everybody has felt that there is a need for uh, an opportunity for a convention center down on this area of town within the mile radius uh, of uh, probably 6,000 hotel rooms. And that, that number of hotels is growing. So we believe uh, with the investment that's happening in, uh, in, the East, in East Biloxi and, and things that just happen, you know, we're on the upswing and it's time to visit with, you know, with, that, with Wall Street in mind uh, the opportunity that BBR presents in order to team up with them to identify, uh, again, uh, the concept. Let's define whether that is doable down here on the, in East Biloxi. And then uh, possible sites. Again, a very objective study that we would have input in the selection of the, of the actual uh, folks who do the study. But this is a, you know, up to $250,000 study that we're partners in. But, uh, you know, the commitment to uh, doing this is, is uh, on them. So uh, we, uh, we're very excited. We feel that uh, it, you know, the, the council should support this effort. And uh, you know, we can, uh, it, you know, Gerald, if you want to talk about anything, if y'all have any questions, and I, uh, as part of this mayor's report, you can provide details. But this, uh, this is a real opportunity with substantial you know, business uh, uh, returns, I think. But again, you know, with the support of all of our, you know, uh, people and, and uh, especially in the hotel business, this this presents a huge opportunity to address, uh, you know, those kinds of things that, you know, the existing coliseum in trying to develop more hotel rooms closer to the to the venue. Uh, this will actually, you know, we hope this study will prove the fact and then identify how things could be funded and how it can be sustained. So. Uh, you know, the, the, the thing that was brought in to my attention that got me very excited, and they compared uh, this new uh, casino, or actually not casino, because it has nothing to do with the casino, uh, but the wharf in Washington, D.C., uh, of a, a typical on-the-water kind of uh, facility that has a tremendous amount of retail, but that view, and it's close to the, the uh, Nationals, Washington the Nationals ballpark. So, I mean, we have those those things that I think we can cash in around that waterfront and the ability to interact with the waterfront and, and the, uh, the, the seawall and all those, those things that I think with that this new, uh, or this, this study will identify as positives. And uh, again, the, the intent is not for our own self-satisfaction, but the Wall Street people who will be putting up to $150 million in this deal. So uh, 
you know, and, and you know, however it rolls out. But anyway, I urge you your support and, and uh, ask if Gerald, if, you know, if you have detailed questions, Gerald or, or Peter can can address that. So, but that concludes my report, I believe. But we do ask, uh, no, one part of the, the report we'd like to ask uh, representative next site to come and give us a report, I think, on uh, some of the activities that they've done. Okay. Is there someone here from next site or someone that will give the report? Well, maybe not. Okay. <laughs> but we'll get that report Mr. to Winter, you. Mr. Winter, is there anyone that's been designated to give the report? Yeah, uh, I'm not sure. For next site? Maybe we, no, we were no. supposed to receive the report. You, uh, yeah, we'll do it next time. All right. Okay, we'll that, defer, conclu that concludes my report. We'll defer Thank the you. report to the next meeting. Okay. I think it's a written report that we're waiting on. All right. Same report we waited on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, council report, Mr. Lawrence. I yeah, just saw short and sweet that uh, you guys had a great interfaith service, and uh, I was just greatly pleased to uh, attend. You, you did a great job, and just wanted to say we commend you for that service. So thank you. Okay. Ms. Newman? Mr. Deming? Mr. Tisdale? Uh, yes, a couple of things. Uh, RFPs for city events at MGM Park some point I think we we're talking about maybe looking at uh, putting some RFPs out there if, if there's nothing on the streets right now is there it's out. it's out right now okay so hopefully we'd know something perhaps in a couple of weeks or at least see who's interested or what kind of interest <coughs> there is thank you I, I'm, I've gotten a few calls this week the homeless situation uh, folks being approached by uh, the homeless and I know we've got the panhandling permits and I don't know if that's making a difference, but I, I'm getting as many calls as I used to. Used to is, is there anything we can do to deal with this, manage the situation better? I guess is my question. Well, you know, again, there th th is a challenge. It's a challenge for all cities, with especially for us. Uh, you know, with where we are, the the, the weather we have, and and uh, you know, uh, again, we've identified about 400 as as the the, the numbers of folks we have to have. We we've uh, done some. Some things at the uh, shoe fly to, uh, you know, straighten that. there. we've actually removed the stairs that uh, has been, you know, uh, we're just adding to, uh, you know, some of the reports that we have. But th it's a challenge, and we have to ha meet that challenge in one form or the other. We've had some, uh, you know, some interactions with some folks who have interest in providing part, you know, maybe uh, uh, a site. But we'll go into that a little bit further on, you know, down as it solidifies. But it is a problem. And uh, and yeah, Chief might want to report, but yeah, we always have about 118 in a week, do we, in counties, Chief? Uh, as as he says in the director's meeting, about 100 in the homeless news, we have about 118 uh, uh, every week, and it does cost. You know, it's costing the city some, you know, some resources, and it, it uh, does cost resources. And, and if if I were to take today, I sat down today and figured out what I would need to do. There's a three-man team working working nothing but homeless all day long right now. Uh, that probably needs to be an eight-man team. But if I did that, that'd be to the tune of eighteen hundred dollars a day in overtime to do that. So that's really not feasible to do. Uh, we're working on a long-term plan with with uh, CSI training and, and finding a point of entry, which we believe is going to be one of the two hospitals. The issue, the problem. And we've talked about this before, about 70% of them have some type of mental illness, and, and you probably know that by now. Uh, the problem is a bed to put them in. If we get a court order, we, we tried to get a court order today, which I think we got 
to remove three of them from the street and try to get them some, some, some type of psychological help, but it's going to take more than that. Long term plan, that's what that is. But we, we also met with, with Hank Ross today, and uh, Hank's going to get to talk with the judges and the court system for us and see if there's something we can do about, about trying to, uh, to speed up the indigency hearings that we have to have on each one before we can incarcerate them. So I'm hoping that's going to help some also. Let, let me add to that. In, in, in meeting with some members of the clergy and so forth, you know, it, it's sort of a breakdown of you've got some. Some folks that have mental challenges and have some <coughs> drug-induced mental challenges. You have homeless, and homeless have broken rules, and you know people who want to go somewhere or get you know a, a, a bus ticket. So there's a, a whole gamut of things there, that we've got to slice and figure out what's the best way. And there is, and there's there's also, and, and I, we've discussed this before. There's an element that isn't homeless. Uh, they're not down on their luck. They actually use this to their benefit, and they they collect money every day from from folks who think they're doing a good thing. And those are the ones that I'm talking about trying to incarcerate because they also fall under this umbrella that we really can't put them in jail without, without having a hearing first. And you can imagine how many hearings that would have to be on a daily basis. So it's, it's overwhelming for, for us. It's overwhelming for the court system. But I promise you we're out there every day doing what we can do. And a lot of times doing what we can do is, is rousing them up, seeing if we can get them some mental help and moving them on somewhere else. All right. Thank you. Okay, I guess that covers that topic for me. Thank you. Um, Snyder Center, I know that we have, I think it has two chillers. One went down last week and it was Not only today. one. And then 12 hours later or two days later, the other one went out. And uh, it was hot in there today. Any idea of a timeline to repair or replace those? And I, I think I was talking with Miss Bell. I think you said they're about 35000 Ms. Bell, it, would you speak into the microphones? They're recording this on Facebook. I'm sorry, but thank you. Yes, one of the components, the new one that we just put in has to be sent back off because it wasn't under warranty through engineered cooling. So um, York will accept it, and um, as long as we ship it back, then the other one is going to have to be replaced, and it's anywhere between thirty to $35,000. So we're, we're talking several weeks? I mean, we're talking Probably, a month? yes. Several okay. weeks, we got to get quotes, and that's what they're working on now. All right. Okay. Thank you. That's it. That's all I have. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Mr. Barrett? I have no report. Mm -hmm. uh, i got a couple things. I, I'd like to uh, first ask uh, Deputy Fire Chief Andy Mason if he would come up and just give a brief report on the efforts of our firemen uh, that are in Mexico Beach and Panama City area and what, what's going on there. Yes, sir. Uh, chief only left uh, with uh, had uh, three or four of our folks, um, three or four folks from uh, uh, the Iowa New Sharon Fire Department. We worked together with them four or five times in the past on, on several from Baton Rouge to New York City, um, Hurricane Sandy relief. Uh, we went down uh, Friday afternoon. We uh, actually based our base camp is in uh, Fort, Fort St. Joe, Florida. Uh, we're there with the with the local fire department. We're helping them rebuild. We're taking first responder home first. Um, every two days we're running. Actually, it ends up almost every day. We got a a crew going down a four to six. They they work one day and come back the next day. Um, Peaceer Fire Department joined us uh, down there. Several of their members of their fire department joined us. It, uh, uh, all in all, we got about 18 folks down there on every given day. Um, we'll be uh, concluding operation on Saturday, rolling up and uh, coming home. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Chief. Uh, I mean, Biloxi, I mean, that's, that's, we're always going to answer the call when there's uh, something like this. We've, we've been there with the uh, devastation and Travis, you know, the, the stuff that happens, and I'm uh, glad to see our, our best of the best out there helping others. Uh, the other thing I just want to mention, uh, this is my last meeting as uh, president of the council. Uh, it's been a privilege for the last eight months. Uh, we've went through a pretty tough budget uh, process and a lot of things over the last eight months, and I can't tell you enough, uh, working with my fellow council members, uh, they inspire me, they, we work hard, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm very fond of the work that everybody does in each of your wards, and, and 
the, the work that we do collectively and individually. I, I, it's really, really a privilege. And we'll appoint a very capable and uh, amazing person uh, in, a, in a couple minutes here. Where's, where's that? Where's, he, where's <laughs> that at? <laughs> it's very near. I'll, uh, <laughs> let me just say that. Uh, all right. Well, anyway, that concludes the council reports. Uh, we'll move on to the uh, public Wait. agenda <laughs> and citizens' comments. Uh, look, we have look, a total of a lot of time. Councilman, let, let me interrupt you, but we do owe you a round of applause. So we, we thank you on behalf. <laughs> You're doing a tremendous job <laughs> handling the group. So thank you so much. Great thank you, Mayor. But I, I was hoping you'd pound on that desk a little bit and, and kind of cheer us on. Shoe. Get the shoe. <laughs> uh, that's great. Uh, we, we have a total of 45 minutes allotted. Uh, each person, uh, raise your hand to be recognized and then come up to the front, have a seat. Uh, I don't see a form up here at the, at the table, so you need to state your name and address clearly for the record so the clerk can record it. And now we have a document also, if you could write your name clearly and legibly so we can uh, kind of enter that into the record. Uh, you can speak on any topic uh, that you would like, just be civilly. And uh, we'll start on this side of the room. Anyone on this side of the room would like to speak? Raise your hand and be recognized. No one? You can speak on any topic, Alabama, you know, any, anything. Uh, on the right side of the room, or my right, excuse me, anybody? Anyone in the back of the room would like to come up and speak? Full house, full house and no uh, comments. I think that's a record. Thank you all, though. Um, we'll move on uh, next to the uh, policy agenda. Clerk will read the resolution. Resolution to appoint a president of the Biloxi City Council. I'll move it. Second. Uh, do we need any discussion? <laughs> got to find out who that. We got to find out who that capable guy is. <laughs> All right, um, Felix Gines. All right. <laughs> he's been not duly nominated. Do we have any other nominations? Okay. You you want to close the nomination? <laughs> All right, we'll close the nomination. So, Felix, come up. We'll give you the gavel. You can get vote started. Let's, Let's vote. vote. Oh, you got to vote. You got to confirm yeah. me. <laughs> you were doing so well. All right. You were doing so well. <laughs> I, need, I, need one more, I need one more week. No. Uh, all in favor? Those opposed? Motion carries. Welcome okay. to your new president. All right. Thank you, Kenny. Let's give Kenny another round of applause for all of you. All righty. I guess I'm that capable guy. All right. Ready? Okay. Resolution B, Lucy. Resolution to appoint a vice president of the Biloxi City Council. I need a motion. I'll make that motion. Motion by Dr. Tisdale. Second by Mr. Lawrence. Any questions, comments? Who is it? <laughs> Mr. Deming. <laughs> we call for the question. All in favor? All right. Congratulations, Mr. Deming. Your first act as president may be your worst. <laughs> I'll give you the list of dates. I'm going to be absent. All right. Resolution C, Lucy. Resolution to agenda. rename a city roadway measuring approximately 1,266 feet is presently identified as Gay Road to Lammy Street. I'll okay. make that motion. Motion by Mr. Glavin. I need a second. Second by Mr. Lawrence. Questions? I, yeah. Dr. Oh, Tizel? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, if we gotten any pushback from any of the residents on uh, – on Gay Road, and that's just uh, the north the north side of Pops Ferry Road to the interstate, right? Okay, thank you. Okay, Mr. Glavin. Uh, yeah, just this is, uh, you know, kind of in, in my ward, D'Iberville had asked for this road to be renamed. Half of the road is on the D'Iberville side, the other half is on the Biloxi side. Um, so there, there just, uh, there's some development happening uh, in that area, and they just requested that it be renamed to Lamy Street. Okay, That's any it. more questions? Call. 
Call for the question. All in favor? Okay, seven of vote. Motion carry. Resolution D. Resolution to consider a request for vacation of an unimproved public right of way identified as a segment of Quaver Street. That's in Ward 2. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Second by Dr. Tisdale. Questions? All in favor? 7 0. Motion carry. Resolution E. Resolution for a street name change for an alley situated north of Greater Avenue, further identified as an extension of Camellia Street to be named Kitty Cat Alley. Motion by Mr. Lawrence. I'll go ahead and second that. Mayor, you want to make a comment about old Kitty Cat? Yes. Wait, wait, wait. There was a man you called Kitty Cat? <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments? Uh, Mr. Deming? It wasn't Cat, right? Yeah. It was Chicken? <laughs> Yeah, I'm like the mayor. I, I'm, I'm known Kitty Cat for a while, uh, uh, kind of a legend in our community. Uh, he actually had a uh, a little little mom and pop's restaurant on Main Street, Kitty Cat Lounge. So uh, this is a, a truly an honor. I talked to his wife, like the mayor did, and um, I think this is a great honor. It was a man. Was a man. <laughs> we call for the question. All in favor? Seven zero. Motion carry. Resolution F. Resolution authorizing an agreement with BBR Biloxi LLC for joint feasibility analysis for the development of an East Biloxi Convention Center and retail complex. I need a motion on that. Move. Motion by Ms. Lawrence. I'll second it. Second by Dr. Tisdale. Any questions, comments? I'm sorry, George, I couldn't hear you. I said, uh, I noticed that they're supposed to be doing a study. They're supposed to be to tell us property. No. No, I mean, one of the property they're looking at. Right. Well, the reason I brought to this, Mayor, is that you showed the picture in the paper. So everybody looked at the picture in the paper. The tallest property. Is that, wait a minute. Let me finish. Hold it down. Hold it down. I know. So everybody thinks it's right. mainly going to be on the tallest property. So the people worry about the oak tree. They worry about the Indian burial ground. So I'm just saying this stuff been brought up. So you put it in the paper, and it was everybody showed the tallest.
down there they had the 28 acres by the VFW. They had different, you know, I know they're supposed to look at them, but I'm just saying, when the picture was in the paper, that's when you get the phone calls. Y'all gonna tear all the oak trees down? Yeah, but okay. Okay, Mr. Lawrence, you have anything else That's for it. Mr. Blessy? Okay. Uh, no, I just thought if y'all had questions for him. Okay. Okay, Miss 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 Newman. Uh, Miss Glavin. Yeah, you know we held a workshop earlier uh, this year. And we had several of the uh, tourism leaders here, casino leaders, and one of the things that they mentioned is convention facilities, that there is a need for it. And why, why is it so important? Uh, and I know we have a convention center uh, you know, down the road a little bit, but because of the critical mass of hotel rooms that exist here and that are coming here, and it can be a game changer. We lose a lot of conventions to other areas because of the facility, the proximity uh, to these uh, hotels that can serve the convention center. And it could be a catalyst uh, for East Biloxi. Uh, I've read the uh, resolution and uh, it does indeed say that they're looking at a feasibility study for East Biloxi. Tullus mentioned as a potential site, but sure, surely there are many, many other sites that uh, could be conducive and we won't know until they make the investment to do this study and give us the results. Is that That's fair? Mr. Right, Lawson? and if you look at page three and four of the uh, agreement, uh, it's actually, uh, the study is to look at all the land east of I-110 all the way to the water. And uh, it says, um, analyze at a minimum the following potential sites. In other words, it names a few, uh, at least those, but you should uh, look at, at any other sites that might once you start looking at it, it might be uh, available. There's a lot of empty space in East Biloxi, so. What's exciting about, you know, studies that, because I was on the Coliseum Commission when we looked at some things. And what's different about today, and about, I mentioned the walk in Washington, but it's integrated with a lot of retail that go along with some of the things that you're doing. So, I mean, it's almost, you know, it, it's a different type of, uh, I guess, it's not just pure, uh, convention space, not just pure square feet. So I think that's a little bit twist, but I mean, that, that's important to what we're analyzing, I think. Yes, sir. Okay, Mr. Mr. Newman. Just, just one thing, I don't disagree with the philosophy, um, but I think it is reasonable for people to believe that Tullus Manor is the site, because when you read through the, the, the agreement, the company that's paying the money to do the study is also paying the city for an option to buy that property if that property is so determined to be the most feasible. Therefore, I believe it is reasonable for someone reading that to think that it is about the Tolis property. Um, now, I've had a lot of questions and it's, it's clearly written in here, but just so it's for the record um, and everybody sees this, Biloxi's not committing to pay anything. We're not paying for this study. They're paying up to $250,000 for the study. They're paying Biloxi $50,000 as an option to purchase that property. If this $150 million property um, uh, project moves forward, we're going to contribute a very small percentage of that money, like $250,000 to um, parts of that project that we determine, correct? That's all I have. Okay, with Dr. Sis Hill. Yeah, Mr. Blessy, I noticed that we're also declaring this property as surplus property. Uh, I'm assuming then that if this is not the site chosen or the feasibility study indicates that it's not feasible, this is still surplus property that any developer could then say, hey, I'd like to do something on this property or bring a project or a proposal to us for consideration. So I just wanted that point to be out there that once we declare it surplus property, it's surplus. We, we have no interest, no, no plans to do anything with that property. So, and it's been empty or there's been nothing on it for quite a while. How many acres is that again? Is it nine? Eight, 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 seven? Eight, eight acres? Okay. Peter. That's good. Thank you. I'm done. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, 
just out of curiosity, I don't recall this in the agreement whether it could or could not occur. If the feasibility study comes back and it says it, it's really not feasible, does that option continue? Can can BBR still purchase the price at two times no. the retailer or? And I just have a final comment and just great to know that there's an interest on the east side of Biloxi and it is a much needed shot in the arm uh, that we need here on East Biloxi. You know, it gives us, uh, like Councilman Glavin said, we lose a lot of conventions. We lose a lot of tourism dollars because we don't have the facilities and this will give us a great opportunity. With all hearts satisfied, um, call for the question, all in favor? A six zero, motion carry. <coughs> Item G, Lucy. Resolution declaring the intention of the mayor and city council to issue general obligation public improvement bonds in the principal amount of $14 million. I'll move it. A motion by Councilman Glavin. Oh. Okay, it was taken. Okay, so. So who was it, Councilman? And who was second by? And by me. Okay, Councilman Baird. Um, I'll just state what I've stated for the last three weeks. Um, I'm not opposed to the bond. However, I will not support any items in the bond that aren't needs. I will not support amenities. Um, we have way more than $14 million worth of needs in the city. And so I'll only support items within the bond that are to meet the needs of the citizens. Thank you, Councilman Baird. Dr. Tizell? Uh, well, as we had a workshop at four o'clock and it's pretty clear we have a lot of repairs <laughs> that can be done in the city and $14 million is just a good start. Uh, really, no more, no less, but no, I'm, I'm in favor of this. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Deming. Um, as per the last couple workshops again my only requirement is that we have an accounting provided to us at every meeting so we can track the spending so like mr barrett stated we're only spending money on necessities and and not just necessities as far as as far as what we call necessities as as what our citizens needs but also necessities to grow necessities for the future um i've had some people talk to me and ask me why aren't we talking about revenue generators and not necessarily revenue generators by investing in retail markets but investing in infrastructure that's going to bring more people to Biloxi that's that's going to be the roads and the bridges that connect people's to ha connect people's homes to, to to work and to and to other facilities within our city and so those are the things that we have to maintain and follow through with this 14 million dollars and as long as we have an accounting every meeting to, to track the progress I'll support this. Thank you, Councilman Newman. Councilman Glavin. Yeah, we. I think we had uh, two good workshops, and and here's a couple of the components of this. Number one is the amount. It's up to 14 million dollars. That's our capacity to borrow money without raising additional millage, and it's also important because as we go far, if we go forward and start to shop these bonds. We cannot go down on the amount. I'm sorry, we cannot go up on the amount. We could go down on the amount if we, we find that we only need 10 or 11 million. We can go down from the 14 to 11. But if we start this at a lower amount at 10 or 11 and we start to shop the bonds, we cannot go up once we issue this intent uh, to issue these bonds. So that's important. Uh, the list of projects, and I think there are many worthy ones. There are certainly those uh, projects that are debatable and what the impact is. But there are a list of items that we're telling uh, when we go to shop these bonds what the intent may be for. But not a penny can go forward in the future, even if we issue these bonds without this uh, body, without the uh, majority of the council to approve any of those projects, you know, whatever they are going forward. Um, so we got bridges in here, we got road repairs and, and improvements. Uh, we have, you know, recreational uh, facilities that are needed in certain areas. 
uh, I think there are a lot of worthy projects and uh, I certainly support this measure for the intent to issue bonds. That's really important. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Glavin. Councilman Newman. Thank you, Councilman Lawrence. My, my thing is the same thing I've been saying just like Nate. We need to fix the roads first. You need to pave the streets. You owe it to the taxpayers of the city of Bluxley. You need to fix the drainage. And when you have money left over, then you go after the rest of the things. But those are the things that need to be done to start with. Take care of the taxpayers in the city of Bluxley. They tired of riding on bad roads. Fix the roads. Pave them. Drainage. Repay them. Whatever. Build them up. Do what you have to do for the taxpayers. As far as the bridge, I don't know where we can get to the bridge. Like they say, it's called buying property. That's what they told their own to meet. That's how the system works. Now, will that happen pretty soon? Probably won't. But to me, the key thing to hear for me to support this is to take care of the roads, the paving, the drainage, the things we need to do immediately. And when you have money left over, then you look at other things. Well, that's the only reason I'm going to support it is strictly. And I'll be up here pounding y'all. Y'all pay attention. You take care of the taxpayers. And you got you got a shoe? I got, I got a shoe? <laughs> no socks, but he has shoes. So. Thank, thank you, Councilman Lawrence. And the uh, final comments is... Uh, you know, I think it's a great opportunity uh, to invest back into the city of Biloxi, and, and our taxpayers deserve um, a good investment, and it's up to us as a council to be responsible. With all hearts satisfied, um, call for the question. All in favor? 7-0. Motion carried. I need a motion on the consent agenda. Second. Okay, I guess that means I motioned it. Second by Dr. Tisdale. Uh, George, you want to start off first? You know, and see, the county working on us to do road repairs is that all through the city or just certain roads? Hello? And I saw you got the hundred thousand dollars for the Sanger. How was y'all able to do that? The last time I went to the C D B G money, they turned it down. Which which uh, item are you asking for about? Hey. Y'all put this again, I figured y'all knew these. <laughs> yeah, this is the hundred thousand dollar grant that we've been talking about since day one that we had they're just giving us a one-year extension on that grant from the, the state historical commission. Well, actually, it's two fifty thousand dollars in the grant that we've been playing around with since 2015. But I think this is coming coming up. So it's fifty thousand so for two years. For two years since since we've yeah. been doing that. So. Yeah. Long story short, we started this job a year ago with a million five. We thought that that was the right take. That a million five was seven hundred thousand of our money. Seven hundred thousand. Community Development Block Grant money. Yeah, CDBG money. Grant. The, the uh, CDBG money was pulled by HUD, which left us with 700 and 100. And, and the 100 is it was just out hanging out there. It's just it's one of those ones we're going to ask for the money when we need it. They, they, they don't send it to us ahead of time. So the grant had run out. This is just an extension of that hundred thousand dollar grant, which leaves us actually with design money chipping into that half million, it leaves us with about five, six hundred thousand dollars sitting in that project right now. But lo let me let me also identify that there, there was some uh, uh, deterioration in that, that back thing that has popped up since the, uh, you know, just the mid million five uh, fixed the roof, fixed the, the, the bricks. So this, we better to put some attention to that, uh, the back part of the, uh, of the, uh, the tower, I guess is what it's called. So that, that's some additional spend, you know, expense that we needed to pay attention to. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the facade is a, the thing you need. The question from uh, 
Yeah. What you're asking is what this is. This is just an, an, a one-year extension to our grant for the hundred thousand dollars. They give us another year to ask for it. You get more money, or you just making sure you're getting this money. <laughs> making sure you're getting this hundred thousand. That's right. I was just noticed the picture downstairs with the box building. They changed the front of the singer. That's that's what you need to keep. The original facade. No, no, I'm just saying. You know, you put these pictures out there, people look at them. That's not the original sign. That's not what it looked like. Just like the tellers was in the paper. That's why they called about the tellers. You know, I'm just saying. So you kid, when you do these the things, when you, you got to answer that's the question. Maybe look different. You know. Okay, George. Anything else, George? No, I'm not. not Y'all go play out. Okay, you want me to move on? Okay, Ms. Newman? No. Mr. Glavin? I have nothing. Mr. Deming? Only one thing. Um, I know I've talked to every one of the council members about this last month, and I asked Peter to put a resolution together for me, and I know he's been very busy, and we haven't done that yet. On T, um, Mr. Glavin is proposing our schedule for the next year. Um, I know I discussed it with everyone on this board, and I'm going to, I'm going to, offer an amendment to amend that to night meetings for the first and third week instead of one night meeting we'll have two night meetings couple important reasons and one of the most important is look at how much participation we get at night meetings we get so much community participation as opposed to what we get in the day second off we're all counts the, the majority of us council members are professionals and we have a lot going on in the day it gives us the opportunity to focus better on what we do and meet with you guys and be here for you and with you when you guys are more available. So I'm gonna offer an amendment to to adjust to amend T from the first and third from the first meeting of the night to the first and the third meetings at night. Okay, we got a motion on uh, changing T to two nights a week. We got a motion on the table by Councilman Deming. Is there a second? Who's, who wants a second? Okay, second by Mr. Barrett. Okay, in a discussion. You probably have with that you had added expenses when you do night meeting. Everything's overtime. Everybody comes is overtime. So the added expense, I don't think it's something you need. George, we actually add to the budget for our clerks for this purpose. I'm just saying. So I don't I'm think just we saying need the added expense was put to the budget for this. Huh? Well, I'm just saying we don't need it. Don't need to okay. change it. Okay, any more qu any more questions? I just want to make a comment. I, I, I agree with George. You, you look at our employees that work all day long, and now we're going to ask them to come to an additional meeting at night. They have families. They have things that they need to do. We're, we're part-time. You know, we, we have three, three meetings that we come to a month, three of these meetings a month. You know, these guys, their time is so valuable so valuable and I, and I think we need to respect that if there is a need to have a night meeting we can always adjust our calendar and say we need to have an extra meeting at night or we need to move one of our night meetings but I I would just ask that we we've been doing this for five years most of us some some longer than that and I would ask for us to really think about considering some of our city employees at that time with their family with their young sons and daughters are is is very valuable to do their homework or have dinner with them or whatever the case may be that's that's just my two cents any more comments on tea with that being said all in uh we're going to call for the question all in favor uh no we just we just we got the motion on and the, and the second on the amendment and this is just strictly the amendment we're gonna up or down and then it'll go back into the uh, consent agenda as amended or as it was. So we're calling for the question on this amendment on T. So all in favor of amending it? It's one, two, three. That's Deming, Barrett, and Newman. All against? It's Lawrence, Gines, Glavin, and Tisdale. Motion failed. Okay, anything else, Mr. Deming? Yeah, I think we should bring a resolution to amend the budget. We put additional funding in for overtime purposes for this reason when we did the budget. We should amend the budget to withdraw that, that addition for overtime. Okay. 
Okay, that's not right. Okay. Um, oh, Peter, if you would, if you could look into addressing that for me. Okay. Um, Dr. Dr. Tisdale. Thank you. On item CC, this is uh, basically a uh, one-time discretionary holiday on December 31st, which is New Year's Eve. I know that we're allotted X number of holidays by state statute. I think we can have two discretionary holidays. One of those is typically Mardi Gras. I can't remember what the other one is off the top of my head. But uh, the, the governor usually, but not always, declares the 31st uh, a state holiday, and, and he can do that. My, my question is, uh, given the fact that nobody's declared that from the state's end of this as a holiday, can we legally pay employees for days they don't work? He's already done that? Okay. Yeah. I, I missed that. If you read, you can pull it up. It's That's fine. There. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, forget I said that. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Anything else, Dr. Tisdale? <laughs> I said <laughs> Mr. Baird? Oh, nothing? Ooh, whoa. Okay, and I have nothing uh, myself. Okay, with that being said, uh, got a motion, we got a second. We're gonna call for the question on the consent agenda. All in favor? Okay, that's 7-0. Uh, Any exceptions, Jay. Mr. Lawrence? Jay. Mr. Lawrence, with the exception on Jay, Ms. Newman, Mr. Glavin? No. Mr. Deming? Yeah. I, W, and Z. Dr. Tisdale? None. Mr. Barrett? None. Okay. All, all motions carry. All right, we're gonna move on to code enforcement. Ms. Creel. The, uh, the first case on the agenda, item A, Kenneth C. Allen. 1896 Southern Avenue. This case is still in violation. <coughs> on, uh, on this property, the owner passed away the owner passed away, and we understand it's uh, it's in foreclosure. It's in foreclosure. Anyone here to sp anyone here to speak on Keith C. Allen? Anyone here to speak on Keith S Kenneth C. Allen? We consider that matter closed. Item B. Item B on the agenda: Cicely Blair. 154 Crawford Street, that case has been resolved. Item C on the agenda, JW and Bessie Britton, 348 Elmer Street, this case is still in violation. And that's all the pictures. Okay. Anyone here to speak in favor? Speak on J.W. and Bessie Britton. Anyone here on J.W. and Bessie Britton? Consider that matter closed. Item D on the agenda: Cynthia Crew Thirds. Once. 71 Dahlia Street, that case has been resolved. Item E on the agenda, Debbie A. and Jeffrey S. David Sr., 330 Hayes Street, that case has been resolved. Item F, Gregory P. and Deborah A. Jones, 181 Daisy Street, that case has been resolved. Item G, Kong Than Tran, 390 Howard Avenue, this property is still in violation.
Anyone here to speak on Con Than Tran? Anyone here to speak on Con Than Tran? We'll consider that ma matter closed. Item H on the agenda, Leon Warren, care of Lorenzo Hill, 346 Elmer Street. This property is still in violation. Anyone here to speak on Leon Warren or Lorenzo Hill? Leon Warren or Lorenzo Hill? We're going to consider that matter closed. Need a motion on the routine agenda? Motion, motion by Dr. Tisdale. Need a second? Second by Mr. Lawrence. George, you have a question? Yeah, uh, Ken, we need a good report there, Ken. And you have any coming? Anything in the money line? So we stand on top of it, pretty much coming in. Close the bit. All right. Thank you. All right. Anyone else want to speak on the routine agenda? Ms. Newman? Ms. Glavin? Mr. Deming? Dr. Tisdale? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Baird? Okay. All in favor? 7 0. Motion carry. I need a motion I'll to make recess. that motion. Second. Dr. Tisdale? All in favor? Yeah. 7 0. <laughs> All right. I don't know who seconded it, please. What, what, what do you want? We done?